Hello and welcome to my video. I'd like to revisit a video that I made back in 2012 called Could Your Ear and Body Piercings Be Causing Your Back Pain? Today, I'd like to expand upon that and uh, talk about that video a little bit. So the video I'm talking about is here on the bottom where that red arrow is, you can see it. But let's review some of the major topics on that video just in case you have a an idea and clue so we can go forward without watching a 13 minute video. Let's go. So in the video, I show you how to use this thing here. It's called a voltmeter. And what you do is with this voltmeter is you take those, uh, you'll see on the bottom, those red and black cords, and you have the little metal probes and you touch them to the, to the fillings in the mouth. And you can do it both probes in the mouth, or you can take one of the probes and touch it to a filling. And the other one could touch to a different part of the body that has like a piercing or body jewelry. Um, here's the mouth, and here's what the probes look like, and you see here. Now, different parts of the body, different fillings correspond to different types of parts of the body that might be causing you problems, such as like your premolars and molars might be causing you problems in your feet or your ankles, where your frontal teeth might be causing you problems with, let's say, um, your knee and stuff like that. So I suggest if anybody has one of these uh, dental charts, um, Review it because it's really good information. You'll see it. And when I get stuck in my treatments with acupuncture or even auricotherapy and I can't figure out why my treatments are not sticking, I sometimes will go back and realize that it is a dental problem. Okay. So in the video, I showed you a, a patient of mine at one time. And as you can see, I'm touching the probe in her filling up on the upper left side, and then I'm touching her chain, her necklace, and it's showing me a reading of 191 millivolts. And what that means is, is that at action potential, that's when your body realizes there's pain and it sends a message to the brain, it starts between 35 and 75 millivolts. As you can see, the buttons kept on. So at 191 millivolts, she's actually in action potential the entire time, and it can get pretty quite high. And if you see here, when I put the probe in the mouth and I take the chain off and it's not touching the body, it's showing zero. It's because I disconnected the battery. And here it is again, and I'm touching her belly button ring. And this is a girl who had back pain, along with a few other things that I can finally discuss and talk about today because we're going to move on and discuss those. And here's another patient of mine whose uh, ring is causing her some uh, pain and with the filling and as you can see when I took the ring off the, the finger you can see it's zero because we disconnected the uh, other metal and it's uh, d disrupted the signal when you get two different metals the similar metals and you have saliva acid you have a battery so when you take away one of the components you stop that action potential also, if you look at my wrist right there, <laughs> that was some years ago. But that is what they call one of those uh, power bands. And uh, I noticed when I was doing that time of my life, I was having problems with insomnia. And it was probably because of that power band. And I noticed that some of my other patients had it too. So if you have patients who have power bands, they have they even come necklaces now, and they have problems with insomnia, see if that's it. And I touched the watch here, nothing. Yeah, very little. And what I was showing you to do was temporary treatments. If you really want to know if, if the fillings are causing the pain with the metal, uh, I was telling you to take some oral gel and some ambisol, but also make sure when you do this that by applying the ambisol and oral gel that it's in your scope of practice. Um, this is just a temporary fix so you know if that's the issue. Um, if that is the issue and you try multiple different treatments, with different medicine modalities and nothing works, the final step would be uh, seeing a biological dentist. There's somebody who specializes in the removal of uh, different amalgams from the, from the mouth and the fillings, and they're quite expensive. Um, back when I made that video in 2012, to have a lot of your fillings removed and replaced with uh, different types of uh, components that are not uh, metallic, it would cost about $10,000. And that was about, like I said, five, six years ago. So I'm sure it didn't go down at this point. It probably went up. The other thing I wanted to say is, is that if you have one, one filling in your mouth, 
and you're in a wheelchair all the time, because I had a patient who had this, um, that actually could be also a conductor too, because she was always putting her hand on the metal or in the, the side of the wheelchairs made metal. So she was conducting with the one filling. So I've seen that too. So just because if your patients have only one filling, check other things too, if they have no uh, body or ear piercings. And just a couple of years back, I also had patients who had uh, crutches who had the same issue. Um, if you can get wooden crutches, that's great because what happens was, even though you can see that the handles um, or pad it, what they would do is they'd rest her leg against that metal. And one patient actually said to me they felt like they had a metallic taste in their mouth whenever they were on their crutches. So it was kind of obvious that where it was coming from. The other thing is that you can also have is uh, dental devices such as uh, snoring, apnea treatment, guards, and also uh, retainers. My wife actually had um, a retainer in, and every time she had the retainer, she always had toe and foot pain. And when she took it off, uh, took the retainer out, the pain went away. So she doesn't read a retainer anymore because uh, she's actually past that point. So her foot and toe pain went away. So we figured out what it was uh, quite easy. Okay, in 2009, I read an article about um, doc, that Dr. Noget wrote, and you can find it here, and it's a, at a place called accushop.com, and you can find on the bottom, this is this gentleman named Lars, a site in Denmark, he's a really nice guy, he owns AccuShop. But in this uh, article, Dr. Noget writes about a, a friend of his in South America who, um, for the first time in her life, she was 60 years old, and her grandchildren gave her some earrings, and she actually had a psych psychosis problem. I mean, she actually went almost mad. And uh, when they took the uh, earrings out, the symptoms went away. And it also talks about another uh, person in the uh, article. It was a football player here in America. We call them soccer players. When they had a piercing, they actually had knee pain. And I forget what the article says, but I believe he was paid a lot of money. So when he took the piercing out, I think his knee pain went away. But you can see here, and you can read this, and you can read Dr. Noget's opinion on piercings and uh, dental devices and fillings. And this is where I learned it from, actually, from Dr. Noget back in Lyon in 2011, I believe. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to play a little game. This is the best way that I can show you how much these fillings um, in the ear and the piercings, specifically in the ear, can affect your um, well-being, your energetic system, or even your pathology. So what I noticed is that over the years, I started seeing patients come to my clinic and I'd always ask, why did you get that piercing? Or what's the significance behind this piercing? Because I have a I have three daughters and one of them just seems to like ear piercings. And I noticed that when she got an ear piercing once, she had some foot pain. And that kind of opened my eyes to a lot of things. But here, let's play a little game about illusions. And I think you'll be pretty surprised on this one here. Okay. So an illusion is, is, is really something that you think is there and it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a trickery. It's your eyes are playing tricks on you. Um, and that's all illusionists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three pictures and take a look at these pictures and tell me what you think they are in the beginning. Because when you see them again, they might have changed. And that's no different than when you look at somebody for the first time, if it's their history, their pathology, or their body, if they have ear piercings or body piercings, or even tattoos, but that's a different subject. And maybe we'll get into that some other time. But let's just stick with the piercings now. Okay. Here we go. So take a look at this photo. We'll just look at it for a few moments. And just take a look at both sides, left and right. And what did you see? How many people saw two old people? Hmm? Did you see uh, look like two old people or maybe uh, uh, two men? One playing a guitar and the other one holding up maybe like a cone. And then on the right side, you might see a, a woman in the hallway. But when you just look at it first, it might just look like two old people looking at each other. But when you look at it again, it kind of can change. Take a look at this. I'll give you a hint. It ain't a duck. Oh, it's a rabbit. See? When you look at it for the first time, you thought it was a duck, but it's not. It's a rabbit. And you can find these online. That's exactly where I found them. And the last one is, uh, this is for the men. You had a dirty mind, didn't you? <laughs> But as you see, when you first look at something, it can be a little bit of trickery. You can think that 
you know, is that really what I'm seeing? And that's what, what goes on with the body. When you first look at somebody for the first time, it could be an illusion, but you got to make sure you know exactly what you're looking at and what you're looking for. So let's continue. How to begin to look at the ear. Okay. So what I want to show you here is this is the work of uh, Dr. Paul Naget, but it's, interpre it's, in it's interpreted by Dr. Um, Nader Solomon. He wrote a book um, on auricular therapy and auricular medicine, and he's showing the phases here. And you don't need to know what the phase is, but what I want you to do is just look at these three pictures. And look at phase two. Uh, when I say the word phase, the word phase means nothing more than the stage of the disease. As you see on the left-hand side of the screen, that's phase one. That's when you're in acute or normal. All the way to the right is phase three. That's when you're chronic. And phase two is more when you're degenerate, more like degenerate disease and stuff like that. And that's a little more tricky. And uh, I won't really talk about the phases today, but just, you don't need to know that. I was just explaining a little bit about the phases, but just take a look at those pictures because the one in the middle might come back and haunt you. So I gave you a warning. So remember this. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about Shinmen. This is a point in the ear that the Chinese call Shinmen. And if you take a really good look at it, um, it, it it's a kind of a, it's for everything. Um, it could be for relaxation, it could be for mind, it could be, you know, it's one third of the way up on the triangle fossa. Some people can say it's pretty close to the knees. They could be using it for energy because stomach 36. Got to think like that. Or you can have some knee pain. But think about what some of the conditions you and your clinic and your practice use Shimin for. Okay? Think about that. So I came across this article from this acupuncturist here down in Australia. And I noticed that he was treating a patient who came in and uh, she had some anxiety and some, a little bit of depression, as you'll see here in a moment. But this is right from his website. And the patient came in and uh, she had shimmin. And uh, this is the, uh, I believe the therapist talking about, and he talks about how great of a point shimmin is and it helps people who overthink or who are worried, who have anxiety, who are stressed out. Um, I don't know if you use it in your clinic for that, but a lot of people do. And this is what the patient said. You know, she has a very busy life and she always feels worried and she always feels like she's uh, out of control. Uh, but after she comes in and she has these, uh, you can see little seeds up in the triangle fossa of her ear, she feels more chilled out or she has a clearer head or she feels more centered, mellow and relaxed. Um, and that's what a lot of people do experience when you uh, treat shimmin. As you can see, I believe those are ear seeds and they might be, they might be ear tacks, I can't tell. They probably are ear tacks because I don't see a bump coming out, but ear tacks. Okay, so before she had the uh, ear tack put in, we'll just call it that, this is what her symptoms before. She felt anxious. She said that word three times. She overthought, she was stressed and worried and worried a lot. And then after the treatment, she felt more centered. Her head was clear. You know, she felt mellowed, relaxed, you know, she just felt really good. She felt that shimmin feeling. Now, if you just looked at that when we were talking about shimmin, there was something that just really, it just stood out. I mean, when I saw that, I said, hmm, I think this person was trying to treat themselves. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is the tricky part. Would most people agree this is shimmin? And this is where people start to freak out. No, it's a little lower, it's a little higher, it's a little bit here, it's a little bit there. Don't get worried. According to Olson, it's one third of the way on the triangle fossa. We can argue that it might be an inch higher, an inch lower, but it's general in that vicinity. Would you all agree? Let's see. Well, I said Shinman. It's kind of like Simon says, not ear Shinman, Shinman. And as you can see on the right of your screen, you can see a, uh, a black circle. And that black circle corresponds to the fossa of the ear where you will have the wrist. And that's where heart seven is. That's called shimmin, heart seven. And on the left, um, you'll see the little blue dot. Same thing. And that's where I call my shimmin. Now, some people, if you look at the left, they talk about ear shimmin. See, shimmin and ear shimmin are two different things. It's a play on words. And on the left-hand side of your screen, you're seeing the ear shimmin. On the right side of the screen, you're seeing the, the body shimmin. 
So let's go quantum now. Let's let's talk about getting deep into the body and and really what did you see in those pictures I was showing you about that patient from Australia that you might have noticed? Take a look. So like I said, my shimmins on the right and the ear shimmins on the left. What you might have noticed with that patient was that she had a piercing. Remember that piercing she had when you when she first walked in? See that piercing right there? When I see that, think about this. When I see that too, I think, does this person have any anxiety or stress? Do you have any patients that you know or any friends or relatives that have that, what they refer to as a cartilage piercing? Think about them. If you know them as a patient or if you know them as a personal friend, think about what some of the conditions they, they might have, anxiety, depression. And you might notice that there is a correlation between a lot of patients who have this that have anxiety or depression. It could just be a, a thing where it's by chance, but for all the years I've been studying this and even working, well, I shouldn't say working, but even going to tattoo parlors and trying to figure out what really is going on. A lot of people who get this so far that I've seen about 98% of them actually have some sort of anxiety or depression. Okay. So anyway, that's when I see piercings, I start to think, you know, what is that piercing? What's it affecting? Not just is it playing a role with, uh, causing some sort of disturbance in the body, like a millicurrent microcurrent that's, that's causing the uh, disturbance of the energetic system. But really, what's that piercing mean? Because if there's, if there's metal in the mouth, and there's a piercing in the ear, what's it, what, what, is there a connection there? Plus also where that piercing is located. Now, the other thing is, think of the part of the body that you would use for anxiety and depression. The body, not the ear. Think of some points. You thinking some? Okay. Now, you remember those pictures I showed you earlier before? Okay, let's go. That point where we call shimmin is really yin tang too. So it becomes quantum. It becomes, it becomes multi-layered, as you see. So when you see a patient who has a cartilage piercing, she's treating shimmin and yin tang. Think about that. Um, what I just showed you was nothing you don't already know. It's just a different way of looking at it, just like with piercings and uh, dental devices. So look at that. So if you look at Shimmin, Yin Tong, Shimmin, and Phase One, they're all the same. Pretty simple. So next time you have a patient come to your clinic, ask questions about why did you get that piercing. And for this one in particular, be very careful because they'll sit there and tell you, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. Oh, my girlfriend and I decided once we graduated from high school or college, we were going to get ones together or something, something, something. But there's more to that. And I found with this pierce in particular, if you ask them to take it out, their hands shake like this. They're like, oh, I'll try to take it out. Don't, that's one of the piercings you let stay in. Okay. Leave it be. Okay. Let's go on. Okay, so this is the mark in the ear that you would see that cartilage piercing where I call my shimmin. The, the picture on the left is something I found on the internet and the picture on the right is a friend of mine. Well, I actually say his dad's a friend of mine. His dad's a really famous clinician here in the uh, Washington DC area and I treated his uh, son once or twice. And as you can see, he has this spot right there, kind of like the one on the left. And my, my friend's son over here does have depression, anxiety, and he's also bipolar. And it, I noticed that I followed him around for a little bit. And the more that he was um, more excited or he didn't take his medicine, that spot got actually uh, darker. So that's another way of checking to see if the, the person's pathology is, is, is kicking up by looking at that. And there's a closer view of his uh, ear. Yep, that's right. Pearson for, body, for uh, birth control. Some years ago, I had a girl who came in who had shoulder pain. And um, she was from Jersey and she was like, I couldn't get a word in from her. And I'm from Jersey, as you can see in this video, I'm talking a little quick. But she told me the only time that she had no shoulder pain was when she had an MRI. And she thought maybe it was because she was in the tube and she had to lay perfectly still for her shoulder. 
And I try to get a word in edgewise. And I said, well, what's that, what's that piercing in your ear? But she wasn't listening to me. And um, eventually when I got a couple of words in, she said, well, can you help me? And I, and I said, no, I can't. And she was, she kind of sat back and she's like, well, I just sat here for 20 minutes asking you if you could help me. And you didn't say nothing. You couldn't get a word in edgewise, but you can help yourself by taking that piercing out and your shoulder pain will most likely go away. And she said to me, she goes, well, me and my girlfriend got these when we graduated college. How come she doesn't have shoulder pain? Maybe you might live 10 years longer. Um, some years later, I saw this patient again, and she came back in, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I like it. I just learned to deal with the pain. But she couldn't get pregnant. Really? That's no surprise. And she wanted to know if she acupuncture could help with fertility. And again, I said, well, I, I, think, I think we can help you. So let's take a look at this. So in the book by uh, Britna Strittmeyer, you see on the right, the young uh, doctor from Germany, um, she wrote a book called Auricular Therapy, oh, I'm sorry, Ear Acupuncture. And on the left is a guy named Frank Barr. And Frank Barr is kind of the, um, the statesman of Germany when it comes to auricular therapy. Back in the early 70s, he actually uh, went to Lyon and trained with Paul Noget for a little bit. And when he went back to Germany, he kind of created his own little bit of style. And um, here's the book I was talking about, Ear Acupuncture by Britney Strittmeyer. And I found it really interesting that uh, Dr. Barr decided at one point, because he also teaches in China, he was going to map out the uh, meridians in the ear. And, you know, it's something that I, I didn't see, but I've been doing this also myself for quite some time. Uh, again, and maybe another video I can talk about how I, I do acupuncture. I like using the eight extra meridians, and I can use them in the ear pretty well, too, now. Um, but what I noticed with, with, with Barr is that his meridian systems were you know, interesting. And let's take a look at piercings. Well, let's go to this first. I don't know if anybody has this. My old book from Deadman is actually blue, but this is by Peter Deadman. And um, <clears throat> he talks about a few points on here. And I don't know why the heck I have in Paracoinum 6 and Amian. Oh, I know why. Never mind. That's for the piercings and tattoos later on, but don't worry about that. Let's talk about Ren 5 with Deadman. Here's what he says about Ren 5. He calls it what's well, really called Stone Gate. And if you read it, it talks about if you pierce this or you, you use a warm needle, it can make a woman uh, infertile for life. Um, some people say it's a myth and some people say it's true. But look where it's at. It's right down there in the lower abdomen. Now, you remember those piercings we talked about, the belly button piercings? Uh, my patient also had back pain because it went straight posterior. So it wouldn't surprise me if a piercing like this, or I'm sorry, uh, a needle there might cause some sort of problems, especially if you go too deep, it might cause a lot of uh, problems in that area. Some pathological problems might show up. But here we go. These are piercings. I want you to take a look at the one called the industrial bar. It's on the top left side up on the uh, upper left. Take a look at that. You see that industrial bar? It kind of goes from left to right. Okay. Take a look at where it and exits on the left-hand side. In auricular therapy, we would say that's over by uh, omega-2. Think about omega-2 or omega-1. Take a look at where bar puts the Ren 5 in the ear. You'll see in the bottom right-hand side of my screen you're looking at, look at the Ren 5. Look at the number 5 up there. I'll blow it up a little bit for you here. Do you see it up on the right-hand side? And do you remember where that piercing went through? It's kind of funny, too. It looks like Cupid's arrow. But that red spot, is where Ren 5 is. And as you can see, um, this piercing is a little bit high, but my patient had an industrial bar and it was a little lower and that's why she was having shoulder pain. She came in. But you can see why this might be causing some infertility. And I've actually seen this happen a couple of times in that one specific patient I was telling you about. When I told her to take the piercing out, she actually got pregnant. And I'm at some level, I believe some people are, are so intuitive. I think it's their ability to kind of will themselves either to not get pregnant or to get themselves better. Like that patient that we just showed with the 
uh, cartilage piercing. She had anxiety and depression. Maybe that piercing was to, at some innate level to treat themselves. It possibly could be. Okay. So what I did here is I actually went ahead and um, Let me go back. Sorry about that. Getting used to this new system here. I overlaid the uh, REN5 with the, the work of Barr and Strittmeyer over the patient's ear. And there it is. So when, when my patient took that piercing out, she got pregnant. And also her shoulder pain went away too. So I haven't seen her in quite some time, so I'm sure she's doing well. So that's about it for the um, expanding on the uh, dental uh, devices. Um, I hope you enjoyed this with the piercings and uh, look forward to another video I'm gonna do about acupuncture in America um, with the Nixon years. I'm also gonna talk about Richard Nixon and uh, acupuncture in the United States in the 70s. I might talk about acupuncture in the 1700s, 1800s. Oh, you didn't know we did that? No? Oh, Nixon wasn't the first one who did it. Matter of fact, somebody who signed a declaration of independence after he was done signing, he went over to the University of Pennsylvania and taught regular therapy and acupuncture. Surprised? I was. But I was more surprised about the Nixon stuff. So, you know, thank you for watching our, this video and I hope it helps.